I think the biggest challenge in, in, in collaboration is being fair to yourself and the, the other person. Because part of you wants to dominate. And the other part says, that's not fair. That's not what collaborating is. And so you have to take a step back, rethink, and go into it with, a, with an open attitude. My name is Leon Hesha and I'm a painter. I work in different mediums, drawing, painting, and ceramics. When I was a young man, I, I, look, I frowned on art in restaurants, and now I realize how foolish I was. But this is a good area because I'm in a number of restaurants. Baggio's in St. Paul, Zalo's in Minneapolis, Chow Bella, I did a large mural in St. Paul. So my work can be seen uh, in lots of various places. The most recent show is a collaboration of 16 artists and myself. The collaborations varied from me giving a piece to a person or them giving me one of their pieces. And all the pieces I gave to people to work on were finished. Some of the pieces that I was given were half finished. The rules were set up early. And one of the rules was, of course, there are no <laughs> rules. And so we just let things happen. But uh, it does vary. And some people uh, didn't want to go back and forth two, three, four times. Some people did. And one of, the, one of the things we had decided was I was to put a stop to it when it was done. So I, had, I was a lucky or unlucky one who had to say, OK, this is done. I worked with a number of artists from different disciplines which include people like Nancy Carlson, who does children books, illustrations, Garrison Keillor, a humorist. He had photographs taken of a model, and I did drawings on, on them. And then Garrison came in and did the text. I think they're very, very successful. And Bane Bulky from the Jungle Theater, I wanted him to narrate one of my spittles, and that's just a, a little statement that I, I do. Well, Bain decided that instead of him doing the talking, he would make me do the talking and would direct me. August 5th, 2010, the 53rd spittle, the collage. Hamlet's choir of angels hummed a quietude of timeless thoughts. But that's the kind of thing that was happening. Where things that you didn't expect were happening, and I think it's delightful. Judy and her husband, Britton, came to visit me a couple months ago. And during the visit, Judy had said clearly that she <laughs> loved this piece. But this piece was just a piece of birch bark empty. So when this idea came to collaborate, I knew which piece to give her because I knew that she loved it. So we, I drove up to Rochester and handed it to her and said, go to it. When he gave it to me, I was completely intimidated for about three days. All of a sudden, it came to me and it was just like, I've got this lamp somewhere. And so I looked at it and within three minutes put it on my bandsaw and chopped it up, but I didn't like her face. I didn't like her gesture too much, so I remade her, remade her face, gave her glass eyeballs. It's really interesting the amount of anxiety that everybody suffered. It was like, whoa, this is their world, and now you're gonna to have to combine that with your world, and you're gonna screw it up. Photographer Tom Arndt gave me a large photograph to work on, but he also gave me a smaller version. The smaller version of, of Tom's photo, I did indeed ink the tires, put the photograph underneath, and ran it over it a number of times. <laughs> and then we took it out and looked at it, and I thought, now I'll add some paint here and there, and we've got the perfect Italian story. I invited Paul Oxborough, who's a realist painter, to participate in this show. Even though we're 
miles apart in regards to our training. I think the difficulty is how do you combine our works in, in a way that, that in the final product comes together and is something nice to, to look at visually. I, I felt like I wanted to work on his piece. Even though that seems sacrilegious, I felt that that was part of the goal. But then any, every time I tried to do that, it felt like I was doing an impression of, of Leon. I realized I just have to paint his portrait right directly on the piece and don't think about Leon's work really at all other than as a backdrop for my own piece. And the result is, is here and maybe Leon will forgive me someday for it. <laughs> it's a little more, uh, I think, art for art's sake than maybe normally. I try to do that as much as I can, but in this case, I completely removed any idea of a collector or anything. I just really wanted to do, it was just about Leon and I. I didn't think about any audience. As a surprise to Paul, I was gonna finish our piece that we'd started a long time ago together. I just signed it yesterday, and there were some, there were some areas that just have to be addressed. Otherwise, I don't feel this is complete. <laughs> What an ego. I mean, come on. He's got to get the last stroke in, doesn't he? Is there paint? I, I feel like there's something. And one of the things about this show, in, in, in all seriousness, is dealing with the ego. Because ego getting, the ego gets in the of way yeah, of everything. Right. And you can't get rid of the whole damn thing, but you can be aware of it. This demonstrates that people do want to work together, that they enjoy working together, that they do respect each other, and things can happen that can be shared with the community. I think the, the respect comes from the process. And I think that's a lot of what this show is about, is, is the process. It's a process that became educational for me, in, in, in that sense. It, it taught me a lot that way. And I think it's something that will probably remain with me. It has to, it has to, because it came out of nowhere, it's not going anywhere, it's gonna stay with me. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. <laughs>